Hey howdy everybody, how's it going? Welcome to episode 1 of Theory Clip. I hate the name too, but it works and it's on brand, so shush, deal with it. This is going to be a pretty fast-paced overview of a lot of very basic concepts of music theory, and if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you want to see more, all the other episodes will be Patreon exclusive, so go ahead and join the Theory Clip tier over on my Patreon, link in description, and then you'll get full access to all the future episodes in which I'll go by like in-depth into more music theory concepts and they're going to be weekly by the way i'm going to make one a week if i forget i'll make two the next week to make up for it if i forget or, or run out of time or like i'm busy or anything i'll make two the next week but there'll be more in depth in each of these topics so don't be overwhelmed if this seems like a lot also if you join that patreon tier you'll be able to ask me any questions about any of the things i talk about you can request certain topics for me to discuss anything music theory related and metal related go ahead and ask it doesn't even have to be metal in general. I'm just saying because most of you are probably metal fans that that's probably what you want to hear. So that I will cover in future episodes, but let's dive into this. Starting with the very basics, the musical alphabet. Musical alphabet is A, B, that's a horrible B, B, C, D, E, F, G. There you go. And it repeats. So once you get to G, it loops back around to the beginning and then it keeps going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If you think about the way that a piano is, I'm not going to draw out a full size piano, but the very bottom note at the at the very bottom of a piano is A. And then you've got da, 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 you got some black keys and the top one is C. So you start at the bottom. You just keep counting all the way up to the top. Boom. That's C. Now, the black keys are sharps and flats and they are in groups of two and three. We'll get to why that is later, but they are sharps and flat versions. God, this is so awful. I'm sorry. Of the normal white keys. So they don't have their own individual names. They're just A sharp or C sharp or like D flat or something like that. So that's what all the black keys are. They're just sharps and flat versions of the white keys. We're going to ignore those for now. And also I'm going to be relating everything back to piano because it's the easiest to visualize out of all the instruments since it's just laid out left to right. It's just there. It's easier to see. Next thing we got to know is rhythm. Let's talk a bit about rhythm. So rhythm, you've got a lot of different rhythms you can have, but let's start with the slowest one, the whole note. It's just a circle and it gets four beats. This is the basics of everything. Then you take that whole note and you split it in half. And I like to draw it out in this little chart because it helps you to sort of visualize how everything works. So the next one, these are half notes. They each get two beats because they're half of a whole. Then you split these in half. Guess what's going to be next? It's the quarter notes. These are the ones that are, that are colored in. They got the, the black note heads. And then these are each worth one beat. So these are all quarters. I'm drawing this pretty quickly so you can catch on. There you go. Quarters. Then each of the quarters split again into eighth notes. Ta-da! There you go. And these are connected. Uh, that was pretty bad. These are connected by <laughs> this beam across the top, as it's called in music. Each of those. And I'm not going to draw every single one, but each of the eighth notes would then get split up into sixteenth notes. And the sixteenth notes, once you get to this point, you just add another beam. So the 16th notes have two beams. Now, if you have eighth notes, again, I'm not going to draw all of them because they're 16. But if you have, let me just draw that little <laughs> 16th, there it is. If you have eighth notes or 16th notes by themselves, by themselves, that was weird. They're going to look like this. They just have a little, little loopy thing. Or if you have 16th notes, they look like that. This is called the note head. This is called the stem. And you can color in the note head. Then you can add a beam to connect it to another note. Now that looks awful. Or these things here, these are called flags. So those are just the different parts of the notes. These are the beats. These are how it works. If your beat is like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, then the quarter note is going to be each of those. The half note you hold for two of those, the whole note is four. The eighth notes are double those beats. The sixteenth notes are quadruple those beats. You double it again. That's basically how rhythm works. You'll notice that you also don't have numbers like three, and that's where dotted notes come in. So I'm going to erase these. Let's take, let's take a half note, for example, because half note is three. So if I have a half note, I have this, and I put a dot next to it. That stem looks so bad. It's hard drawing on a tablet, you know? If I put a dot next to it, the dot adds half of that note's value. So you can think of it as like three of the next level down. So that's going to equal three beats. So if each of these eighth notes is half of a beat, 
and you have, let's say you have a dotted quarter note, for example, the dotted quarter note is going to be three eighth notes, which is going to give you one and a half beats. So that's how dotted notes work. That's how you kind of get the in-betweens of all of these numbers in this chart. Next up, we're going to talk about how you read music. This is kind of janky, but it's okay. You can deal with it. This up here is the treble clef. It's also called the G clef because the little loopy thing right at the end here, this points to this line, which is G. Then the bass clef here is called the F clef as well, sometimes, because the two little dots point to this line right here, which is F. Now, there are more clefs than just these two, but they're usually used by instruments like the viola, for example. And if you play viola, you're already a masochist, so what's one little clef change going to do, you know? Notes. All right, notes are on lines and spaces. You can have notes in these spaces here or in, sorry, on these lines. There are four spaces and five lines. The spaces in order from number one to four are F, A, C, and E spells face, and then the lines in order of 1 through 5 are E, G, B, D, and F, which is an acronym you can use to memorize that. Every good boy does fine. The bass clef, the spaces here are going to be A, C, E, and G. You can think all cows eat grass for that, or make up your own. I have a lot of students that just make up their own stuff because it's funnier, and you can remember it better if you make it up on your own and then the lines in the bass clef are as follows you have g b d f and a good boys do fine always which is kind of similar to every good boy does fine so i don't really like it you can use again one of your own if you come up with one of your own a little acronym to help you remember it but that's the basics of it that's how you read these notes now the most important i think of all these notes is middle c and it's right here on this ledger line, as it's called, as in Gen Ledger of Skillet. There you go, ledger line. Now, middle C is the most important because it is the C that is most in the middle of the piano, and also it acts as the midway point between the treble clef and the bass clef. So if you see middle C here, I don't know why, okay, my hand bumped the screen, just ignore that. If you see middle C here, it's closer to the treble clef. But if you have middle C down here, it's closer, it looks awful, let me redo that. It's closer to the bass clef. So in the world of piano, treble clef is right hand, bass clef is left hand. So this would mean play C with your right hand, and this means play C with your left hand. In other instruments, it's a little bit different because it's not always split up into hands. But again, I am primarily a pianist, so I'm going to kind of go in the vein of piano and explain how that all works. Note stems, by the way, just as a little tangent, if you're interested. The note stems just always point towards the middle line of whatever clef they're on. So if you have notes like here below that middle line, the third line, then they're going to go up. If you have notes on or above the middle line, then they're going to go down. And they always go up on the right side and down on the left side, like that. That doesn't change how a note is played, it's just a neatness thing. Before we talk about scales and keys and all that, I want to talk about time signatures. Time signatures tell you how many beats you have per measure and what note gets that beat. So take the most common time signature, 4-4, four, four, for example. If we have 4-4, four, four, that means we have four beats per measure, and the quarter note, which is what the four represents, gets the beat. So that's going to tell you, oh, get out of here. So that's going to tell you, if we have a, a, a bar line there to split up the measures, that's going to tell me that we have four beats here, so I can do four quarter notes to equal this, four quarter notes, bam. Quarter note is one beat. There you go. One, two, three, four. You could also have it like this, where you could do two half notes, because that's half notes are two, remember? So it's like two plus two. Or you could have a whole note by itself, which is just four. And then when you reach the end of a song, you'll have a double bar line like this. Actually, this one on the right is going to be a little bit thicker, but it's a little hard to draw on here. So just deal with it. It's fine. These time signatures can get pretty crazy. And that's basically what math rock is, is like switching up your time signature. So let's say you wanted, I don't know, 16 uh, 30 second notes and you have 16 32, which is a little bit ridiculous, but that's something that you could possibly do if you wanted to write a song in that time signature. Although 16 32, you could just reduce that to something that makes a little bit more sense. So something that's a little crazier you could do is like 17 16. Yeah, now you have 17 16th notes per measure, which is math rock, basically. It's like one little 16th note off from being a complete 18. All right, here we go. Scales. This is where things get interesting. I'm only going to talk about major and minor scales today. I'm going to have a future episode where I go in depth about other ones 
and explain the circle of fifths, which is a, a more involved way to help remember scales and learn the patterns between those. But for today, I'm just doing major and minor. So let's take the C major scale. That's the easiest one to start with. You got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C again. I'm going to label these each with a number. And this number is the corresponding scale degree. Some people like to put this as eight. I just call it one because it's just one again. So I don't see the purpose in having eight. There are seven distinct notes in a scale and then you get to the top and it's just back to the one. So technically eight notes in a scale, but seven distinct notes. So if you're playing a scale, you'll go C to C. So that's what we got here. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Now I picked C because it's the easiest to visualize on a piano. So let's hop on over to my keyboard real quick. This is C. This is middle C. You can see it's in the middle and it's C. Or I guess it's the C that's most in the middle. Okay, this is middle C. It's important. And we're starting with the C scale because it's easiest. So there's two different kinds of steps going from letter to letter. You got whole steps and half steps. So for example, C to D is a whole step because we're skipping that note right there. So it goes to the next letter. It's still C to D, but we're skipping a note. So it's a whole step. A half step is something like E to F because there's no note in between. So if I have C to this note, which could be considered D flat, then that's also a half step. So you've got half steps and whole step. You can also go here to here, which would be a whole step because you're skipping this one here to here, which would also be a whole step, different kinds of whole steps. It's not always going to be white key, white key, blacky, blacky. Sometimes it can be like that. Like I said, white and black, two blacks, two whites, whatever. It can be a bunch of different things. So let's start on C and let's count this pattern up. So it's going to go whole step to D, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That's the key of C. This is the easiest to visualize because you can see that pattern in the black keys. So you have two whole steps from skipping those two and then a half step, three whole steps and a half step. There you go. There's your major scale pattern. So that pattern again is whole between these two, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That's the pattern for every single major scale, no matter which note you start on. You can start on any note on the entire piano and it'll get you a major scale if you follow that pattern. Going back to the piano now, the minor scale is the exact same thing, but if you started on the sixth scale degree of a major scale. So let's start with C major again. The sixth scale degree here is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's an A. Let's start on A and we'll go, I'll just move down to this A and we'll go here. So it's whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. A little bit different, but that's what relative major and minor keys are. A major key and a minor key that share the same number of sharps and flats, in this case, C and A. And it's always going to be the sixth scale degree of the major key to find the minor, or if you're in a minor key, it's the third scale degree of that minor key to find the major. So in the bass clef here, I drew a minor scale. So between these first two, that gives you a whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Those are your patterns. Major scale, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, minor, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. There you go. Works for every single key, no matter where you start. It just so happens that C is a really good reference because there are no sharps and flats, so you can physically see the black keys that you skip, and it's a really good way to help remember that pattern. Because it's all white keys, I hate the key of C major. I think it's a little bit boring. It can be done pretty well, but for me, most of the time, it's boring. Yes, I am biased. So let's use this as a segue to talk about keys. Since there are 12 different possible notes in standard Western tuning, counting all white keys and black keys, that gives you 12 different combinations of each set of keys. You can have 12 different major keys, 12 different minor keys. You can get into modes and stuff like that, which I won't do today, but it's all up to the creativity of the artist. Now, metal songs are usually in minor keys because minor keys naturally sound sad or angry, which, you know, a lot of metal songs just happen to be. So let's look at what makes up these keys. Going back to the grad staff, and I kind of referenced this when I was talking about the key of C, each key has a unique number of sharps and flats, and that number will tell you what key you're in. I'll go more in depth into this in a future episode, but basically sharps and flats always appear in a set order. So when you add sharps or flats, you're not changing the ones that are already there, you're just adding onto them. If you have a key with one sharp, which looks like this, that sharp will always be F sharp. If you add another sharp, then you're going to have F sharp and C sharp and so on and so forth. I'm going to fix that top F sharp because it looks bad. So the order of sharps is F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Looks like that. 
you can think of it as a little pattern like two three two which kind of helps you remember where to place them and then the order there's a little acronym you can remember for this f c g d a e b Foxy college girls don't always eat breakfast. Why does that E look like that? Anyway, that's the acronym that I use to remember the order of the sharps. For the flats, the flat order is going to be B, E, A, D, G, C, F. The flats go in a zigzag pattern like that. And it's the same thing in the bass clef here. And if you're a very astute observer, or if you know this already, you'll notice that the B, E, A, D, G, C, F why ugh, what's wrong with me B E A D G C F is just F C G D A E B in reverse so they are just reverse order basically so if you memorize one you memorize the other the way that i remember the flat order is like this i remember bead and then greatest common factor bead gcf that's it there you go like I said, I'll do a more in-depth episode explaining this and explaining the circle of fifths, and I'll go in greater detail about like how they work. But basically, if you see a key signature and you're wondering what key you're in, if it's in a key with sharps, let's take um, let's take four sharps for example. So you have F, C, G, and D. You look at that last sharp and you go up a half step. E. So that note right there is E. If you remember that the spaces are F, A, C, and E. That top note is E, so we are in the key of E major. If you want to find out the minor key, you look at this last sharp and you go down a whole step, which gives you C sharp because C is sharp over here. So this key gives us E major or C sharp minor. You'd have to actually hear the song or look at the sheet music for the song to tell what key it's in, but it's going to be one of those two. You can also think about the key of E major and go down a minor third or count up to the sixth scale degree that will also give you whatever the minor key is because as i talked about with the relative majors and minors in c it's the same thing in any other key that you are in the rule for flats is a little bit different if you have four flats for example i did four sharps i'm just doing four flats if you have four flats instead of going a half step up from the last one like you do with sharps you look at the second to last flat and that will tell you what your key is. So if you remember back from earlier, when we know that F, A, C, E are the spaces, so this is gonna be A, we are in the key of A flat. And then the key of A flat, find the sixth scale degree, go down a minor third. Either way you look at it, the minor key is then going to be F minor. So it's gonna be A flat major or F minor. And that's how you figure out sharps and flats whenever you see a key. That's all I've got for today. I hope you learned something. If you didn't, maybe you'll learn something in my future episodes, or maybe you just know so much about music theory already that you don't even need this little course I'm doing here. But if you are interested and you want more, go ahead on over to my Patreon. Again, link is in the description. Join the Theory Clip tier. That's going to give you access to all the episodes. And again, they will all be Patreon exclusive from here on out. This is just like one episode to kind of get it out there for people and to see if people are interested then they can come over to the patreon and join up and have a grand old time i'm going to be doing one episode a week again so it'll be worth your money to come and check it out thank you for all your support thanks for watching the video and have a good day i'll see you in my next one Bye bye